September 3rd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Isaiah chapters 15 through 17 of the Old Testament Here is a message about Moab. Indeed, in a night it is devastated. Ar of Moab is destroyed. Indeed, in a night it is devastated. Kur of Moab is destroyed. They went up to the temple. The people of Dibon went up to the high places to lament. Because of what happened to Nebo and Medaba, Moab wails. Every head is shaved bare, every beard is trimmed off. In their streets they wear sackcloth. On their roofs and in their town squares, all of them wail. They fall down weeping. The people of Heshbon and Eliela cry out. Their voices are heard as far away as Jay has. For this reason, Moab's soldiers shout in distress. Their courage wavers. My heart cries out because of Moab's plight, and for the fugitives stretch out as far as Zoar and Eglash Elisha, for they weep as they make their way up the ascent of Luhith. They loudly lament their demise on the road to Horonaim. For the waters of Nimrim are gone, the grass is dried up, the vegetation has disappeared, and there are no plants. For this reason, what they have made and stored up, they carry over the streams of the poplars, Indeed, the cries of distress echo throughout Moabite territory. Their wailing can be heard in Eglaim and Bir Elam. Indeed, the waters of Diamond are full of blood. Indeed, I will heap even more trouble on Diamond. A lion will attack the Moabite fugitives and the people left in the land. Send rams as tribute to the ruler of the land, from Sela in the desert to the hill of Daughter Zion, at the fords of the Arnon. The Moabite women are like a bird that flies about when forced from its nest. Bring a plan, make a decision, provide some shade in the middle of the day. Hide the fugitives, do not betray the one who tries to escape. Please let the Moabite fugitives live among you. Hide them from the destroyer. Certainly the one who applies pressure will cease. The destroyer will come to an end. Those who trample will disappear from the earth. Then a trustworthy king will be established. He will rule in a reliable manner. This one from David's family. He will be sure to make just decisions and will be experienced in executing justice. We have heard about Moab's pride, their great arrogance, their boasting pride in excess, but their boastful claims are empty. So Moab wails over its demise. They all wail. Completely devastated, they moan about what has happened to the raisin cakes of Kiriabraseth, for the fields of Heshbon are dried up, as well as the vines of Sibma. The rulers of the nations trample all over its vines, which reach Jazer, and spread to the desert. Their shoots spread out and cross the sea. So I weep along with Jazer over the vines of Sibma. I will saturate you with my tears, Heshbon and Eliela, for the conquering invaders shout triumphantly over your fruit and crops. Joy and happiness disappear from the orchards, and in the vineyards no one rejoices or shouts. No one treads out juice in the wine vats. I have brought the joyful shouts to an end. So my heart constantly sighs for Moab, like the strumming of a harp my inner being sighs for Kira Raseth. When the Moabites plead with all their might at their high places and enter their temples to pray, their prayers will be ineffective. This is the message the Lord previously announced about Moab. Now the Lord makes this announcement. Within exactly three years, Moab's splendor will disappear. Along with all her many people, there will be just a few insignificant survivors left. Here is a message about Damascus. Look, Damascus is no longer a city. It is a heap of ruins. The cities of Aurora are abandoned. They will be used for herds, which will lie down there in peace. Fortified cities will disappear from Ephraim, and Damascus will lose its kingdom. The survivors in Syria will end up like the splendor of the Israelites, says the Lord who commands armies. At that time, Jacob's splendor will be greatly diminished, and he will become skin and bones. It will be as when one gathers the grain harvest and his hand gleans the ear of grain. It will be like one gathering the ears of grain in the valley of Rephaim. There will be some left behind like when an olive tree is beaten. Two or three ripe olives remain toward the very top, four or five on its fruitful branches. 
says the Lord God of Israel. At that time, men will trust in their creator. They will depend on the Holy One of Israel. They will no longer trust in the altars their hands made or depend on the Asherah poles and incense altars their fingers made. At that time, their fortified cities will be like the abandoned summits of the Amorites, which they abandoned because of the Israelites. There will be desolation. For you ignore the Lord who rescues you. You pay no attention to your strong protector. So this is what happens. You cultivate beautiful plants and plant exotic vines. The day you begin cultivating, you do what you can to make it grow. The morning you begin planting, you do what you can to make it sprout. Yet the harvest will disappear in the day of disease and incurable pain. The many nations massing together are as good as dead. Those who make a commotion as loud as the roaring of the sea's waves, the people making such an uproar are as good as dead. Those who make an uproar as loud as the roaring of powerful waves. Though these people make an uproar as loud as the roaring of powerful waves, when he shouts at them, they will flee to a distant land, driven before the wind like dead weeds on the hills or like dead thistles before a strong gale. In the evening there is sudden terror. By morning they vanish. This is the fate of those who try to plunder us, the destiny of those who try to loot us. God, we do that. We ignore the God who rescues us. We pay no attention to our strong protector. We cultivate beautiful plants and plant exotic vines. And in our world, that would mean that we cultivate a worldly lifestyle. We cultivate exotic cars or houses or food or titles or money or marriages sometimes I think we act more like belligerent teenagers than anything else you love us beyond anything we can imagine you take care of us beyond anything anyone has ever taken care of us and you want to protect us three amazing things that most people's DNA would crave to have somebody who is sovereign and in control of the entire world Pay attention to just me and what I need, what is best for me, how he can protect me, how he can love me. And yet, God, we're so sidetracked with the worldly things, with the worldly choices. I was just talking to a friend of mine, and I certainly make a ton of worldly choices. So this is not a judgment statement. This is just a story <laughs> explaining this. And we were talking about people choosing their will over your will people choosing to destroy their world just like uh, in this reference is specifically talking about is Israel Israel saw your power Israel clearly saw your sovereignty Israel knew what was going on um, they knew you probably better than, than many of us do actually just in light of getting to see what you intimately did with with that group of people your chosen people and yet they chose a worldly life over the protector of you and we were talking my friend and I were talking today about choosing relationships for a variety of reasons choosing them for status choosing them for comfort choosing them for for financial choosing them for green cards <laughs> choosing them for a variety of reasons none of the reasons being because it was God's will and the desires in my heart that you haven't taken away yet, God, is I would I would love to have a family. I would love to have a husband. I would possibly love to have kids. I would love to have a, a Christian household like that. With with all the problems that go along with that, I would still truly love to have that in my life. And I've had to learn a lot since you gave me my new heart about what does that really mean. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to get it wrapped in a bow <laughs> in the exact package that I think that that's what I want. Because what is crazy awesome is you love me more than I love myself. You take care of me way better than I take care of myself. And you're going to give me what is the best. 
I, oddly enough, in the last year and a half, I have had three and a half, <laughs> three and a half marriage proposals. I could have had the husband. Um, three out of the four of them came with kids. I could have had the kid part. Um, I could have had the family. But it wouldn't have been a Christian family. I would have been the Christian. But it wouldn't have been your will for me to have those relationships. It wouldn't have been your will for me to be joined together with that person and, and form a family. Um, and you were really clear in all those relationships. And looking back, I'm very thankful for how clear you were <laughs> about those relationships. We really need to make sure that in all cases that our will doesn't supersede you. Not only for the fact, obviously, that you know what is best for us and take care of us and love us beyond anything we can imagine, but more importantly, because you are our God. You have asked us to be obedient to you, not to question you. And anytime we choose our will over yours, we are more than questioning. We are questioning and then throwing it up in your face that we are going to choose our way, our will, our desires over what you have for us. And as we can see in Isaiah, we know that destruction will come from that. <laughs> that nothing good will come out of us choosing our will. You will always make things happen that are good that come out of it for your kingdom. But boy, we sure mess up our lives a lot when we choose our will. And don't get me wrong, I still choose my will to this day, even with a new heart. Uh, hopefully it's less and less and the resolution is a deeper relationship with you. But I still, I still mess that up. I still don't get that I need that protection from you. I still don't completely get that obedience piece of it. And I'm still, and will be for the rest of my life, working on those pieces. But God, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you so much for loving us beyond measure for rescuing us so many times, usually from ourselves, and rescuing us from the world, protecting us from this world. I think of those relationships in the past year and a half, and if I had said yes to any of them because they were the desire of my heart, not your heart, but the desire of my heart, if I had said yes to any of them, I think where I would be right now, and it's, it's something that's really scary to me that if I had chosen my will which at the time I really wanted to and you know I did <laughs> my life would be so worse off right now I probably wouldn't be doing daily video Bible for you in fact I can probably much pretty much guarantee I wouldn't have been obedient um, I would be completely sidetracked uh, by these people who most of them go to church but kind of half half-heartedly more like Sunday Christians. Uh, one of them, I'm pretty sure, was just playing at this whole Christian thing to attract my attention. Um, and throughout it all, you could have let me choose my will at any given time. You could have just put your hands up and said, fine, Janelle, if this is what you want here, you can have it and let me fend for myself and it would have been horrible and the next verse talks about yet the harvest will disappear in the day of disease and incurable pain it starts off by saying the day you being you begin cultivating you do what you can to make it grow the morning you begin planting you do what you can to make it sprout and if we think about our will that way that anytime we choose our will, in this case, let's say a relationship that I had chose, let's say I chose to agree to marry one of those guys, I would have done everything possibly, humanly possible, to make it work, to cultivate it, to plant it, to make it sprout, to, to make it healthy. Yet any harvest that would have been reaped from my own will in those relationships, exactly as Isaiah says, it will completely disappear and it will come disease and incurable pain. All of these guys, God, would have very much intentionally wanted to be my main focus in my life. You are my main focus in life. You will always be my main focus in life. Um, I don't ever want anybody to come into 
that arena. I want to share that area of my life, but you will always come first. And I thank you for loving me enough to not let me have my way. Gosh, that's hard to say because the last couple of years have been kind of odd, but I thank you for not letting me have my way, for making sure that your will stood true in my life and that you truly were my protector through all of those situations, through all of those relationships, making sure that I clearly knew one who was in charge <laughs> And two, whose love I truly had, whose unconditional love I truly had. God, it gets really overwhelming to me to think about how you came in and rescued me from those situations. It did instill a deeper relationship between you and I uh, in each of those situations. And, and ultimately, maybe that was part of what you wanted me to learn. But I am overwhelmed at how much you care about me. I am overwhelmed at your love. I am overwhelmed at your grace and mercy that you have shown to me, especially when I keep choosing my will over yours. God, allow my life to reflect you. Allow my choices to reflect your glory. Allow my statements in this world to reflect your grace and mercy and allow me to show some sort of shadow of the love that you have for me. Allow me to show that to other people. Thank you for being our protector, especially when we think we don't need protecting. Thank you for your will over ours. In your son's name I pray, amen.